Hello everyone, welcome back to NPTEL MOOC's course on developing soft skills and personality. This is week 8, module number 4, lecture number 46. I am Dr. Ravichandran from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences of IIT Kanpur giving you this course now for the past 8 weeks. This is the concluding week and then I started with presentation skills and this module, this lecture will conclude our discussion on presentation skills giving you more inputs on how to use visuals. Visuals is an aspect of nonverbal communication along with body language you also need to know how you can use this effectively. Before I start let us take a quick review of what I did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture I uh, address the issue of body language in public speaking. I told you that the role of body language is so crucial that some people use very effective body language and get away with uh, very fraudulent contents also. Many politicians for example, they develop just oratorical skills with less content and use powerful body language to convince the audience. But in order to you become a professional, I emphasize that your content should be equally good as well as your body language. To make your body language good, effective, what should you do? Practice before the mirror. In today's context, even you can use videos captured on your mobile and then check that. But nothing like mirror because you are doing it live and then you just see whatever things you do not like to see and you can make modifications appropriately dress suitable for the occasion, do not hide when you are going to your podium, do not hide, okay. be open, be honest and maintain eye contact with all. Even if somebody is very difficult to maintain eye contact with, try to look at the persons for it. So, do not try to maintain the direct eye contact and try to maintain eye contact with those whom you like initially and slowly you try to spread through the audience. It can be in the form of a triangle, identify corners, it can be in the form of a square and identify somebody in the middle and then keep shifting your eyes. But then that will give the audience that you are trying to maintain eye contact with all of them throughout. Do not shift legs, that is one leg up and then the other leg down. So, do not do that kind of uh, movement. Do not hold on to anything that is holding something very firmly is indicating that you are nervous. Sometimes people hold on the chair that is kept before them, they hold on to the desk that is kept before them, they hold on to even chalk pieces uh, giving the impression that as if they are going to smoke, uh, as if it looks like a cigarette. They hold on things, they hold on pencil, they hold on scale, they hold on the pointer. Now try to keep them on the table use them only when it is required. So, do not hold on to anything and all the time try to face the audience. Whether you create a very amicable response from them or not, face the audience. So, you should be bold enough to face the audience and keep the palm open. So, do not try to um, close it, do not try to cross it, do not try to put it in your uh, hand pocket, keep it open. Speak loudly and clearly. In fact, uh, uh, it is the first thing you should be doing when you go there as a professional to check whether everybody in the audience is able to hear you clearly. And maintain a normal pace, do not speak too fast, do not be deliberately too slow. Okay. In both cases you are exhibiting that you are nervous, never slouch. Okay. Instead of a firm thing, just slouching is uh, stooping and then appearing to be too low because of the fact that you are low in confidence and never turn back to the audience or even if you are going to show something on the blackboard till try to maintain at least off eye contact with them, never turn your back. So, that way you will completely lose contact with the audience. Let us look at the use of visuals now. <coughs> what are visuals first of all? So, visuals are those uh, 
non-verbal part of communication in which you do not use words, you do not use the verbal part, but you use pictures, you show photographs, you can use graphs, pie charts, maps, any kind of diagrams and then uh, the cross sectional diagrams such as frontal view, aerial view okay, and even a model, a prototype of something which is bigger in size, but you show a small module and a blueprint of a house or of a big project that you are planning to uh, materialize. Now, these things without words, but they are shown in the form of visuals. Now, using visuals actually enhances the quality of your presentation. Okay, instead of putting just words, if you put some picture, but then you should not deliberately put something like the face of a very uh, beautiful actress and then so that everybody looks at it, but they will miss the main point of what you are discussing that will be completely distracting and it will be completely inappropriate. Of course, people will be looking forward towards looking such pictures, but then the complete message will be lost and people in fact will be laughing at you for using such inappropriate pictures. So, what is the purpose of visuals? Visuals illustrate key points. So, it is very easy to show a picture. As it is said, a picture is worth 1000 words. Instead of describing something in so many words, just show them a picture. Okay. It will illustrate key points. Pictures can also be used to reinforce verbal message. You say something, you show it to them in the form of a visual. It can be used to stimulate audience interest. So, you want to introduce a new concept to some people who have no idea of what is that. So, you can first show them the picture, you can ask them what is this, can you make a guess, what is the function, why should we use this. You can stimulate audience interest and in times when the presentation becomes somewhat monotonous, when you show them a visual, so their attention will be focused. So, you can focus audience attention using a visual. So, these are the four important purposes for which we use visuals, but what kind of guidelines you should be following when you want to use visuals. So, PowerPoint itself is a kind of visual you are using. And when I talk about long sentences and all that, I am just looking at even the words which are written in the form of visual, because we are just showing to the audience. So, when you use powerpoints particularly, do not use long sentences. Okay. Instead of using long sentences, use bullets and take only keywords and phrases. Use appropriate font size. Some uh, places you need to show 24 font size at least, in certain cases it will be 28. Titles sometimes are even above 28, 36. Okay. Transitional headlines are between 28, 32. But 12, 14, they are okay for reading but not in terms of showing them on PowerPoint, especially when the audience are likely to be larger, bigger and then they are likely to sit at the end. So, you need to check whether they will be able to see the font size. So, you need to go to the venue, identify how big is that and how can they easily look at your presentation and see even from the last row. The next thing is appropriate colors. So, suppose you are uh, uh, going to show them something in daylight okay, and then you are just uh, uh, using light colors, okay, yellow, light yellow and then light pink on the background. So, they will not be able to see, you need to use for instance dark blue and yellow in terms of font. So, they will be able to see the difference. So, it should be contrastive when you are showing it in daylight. Okay. So, keep appropriate colors so that they are able to see the fonts clearly and when you use 
slides in PowerPoint, spell check every slide. Any spelling mistake that goes in the PowerPoint is owned by you. You cannot say that your uh, friend or secretary or uh, student typed and that made that error. In fact, nowadays as you type, so good uh, softwares will underline the spelling mistakes and then you can correct it even when you type it. So, do not show any slide, any visual with spelling mistakes. Check visibility even by going towards the end and then identifying the length of the room. When you show the visual, okay, even if it is PowerPoint, speak to the audience, do not look at the visual and then talk, okay, do not do that. So, speak to the audience. Stop talking when making adjustments to the equipment. So, sometimes visuals are shown in over overhead projector. So, you take one and put another one. Sometimes even PowerPoint, sometimes you have to do something to move it. So, when you are doing it, do not talk, do not look at the visual and talk, all the time look at the audience and try to talk. The other important thing is, once let us say you are showing a visual either you are displaying it or you are putting it on the OHP and then they are able to see that. Now, you are discussing, you have put the picture or a map or something and then the audience are looking at it. Now, once you have made a point and the visual is in terms of connection is not to be shown anymore, just remove it and change the visual as the topic changes do not leave it for a long time because it loses its relevance and audience will also lose interest in your talk because they will just look at the visual and they will feel that you are just still continuing with the same uh, thought in terms of visual, but in terms of verbal you have moved to something else. So, do not confuse them and they will uh, feel the monotony. Do not leave visual aids too long. So, even if you cannot change it, do not just leave it. So, close it, keep it away and then continue with your talk. So, that audience attention is focused towards your speech, not on the visual. And if you are going to use PowerPoint okay, or any kind of visual to move one after another, who will do that? You are doing it, somebody will do. Uh, who is going to display that? Will you do that or somebody will keep changing it? So, identify who is going to do that. Even sometimes you can show videos that is also part of visuals. So, pictorial representations of something, animated versions, but are you taking somebody's help or are you going to do that? In case you have to do, plan how you are going to do. Do not waste the audience time okay, and minimize uh, this uh, time taken for uh, adjustment and all that. When you use other supporting materials in the form of visuals, ask these questions, are they visible in the back row? You can even ask them, if it is not visible, if you can take it out and circulate that is also fine yeah. or you can tell them to come to the front or you need to enlarge the size if possible. Also ask whether it is relevant to your presentation. As I said, showing uh, things which are attractive but not relevant has nothing to do with your presentation, you will also lose effectiveness in terms of giving a presentation. Ask the question whether the supporting materials are short, so they do not distract the audience too much from the oral portion of the presentation. If the uh, visual part is longer, so audience are likely to get distracted. Ask again whether it is well timed in relation to your presentation. Is it coming appropriately at the right moment or it is coming wrongly? So, that you need to uh, ensure. Now, watch out, avoid complicated derivation. Look at the one that I am showing you. Now, nobody, I, I do not know, even a max teacher or somebody who is so good in uh, theorems and all that will be able to just take a quick look and understand what is the purpose of showing this. Visuals should not make the audience use a microscope and check or use detective work and identify what is this 
and then do not do this thing. Visuals are just correlating, okay, they are just adding. So, do not confuse, do not distract, do not make it a complicated one such as this by using a derivation. This is a wrong way to use visual and when you do that, there are certain things you need to watch out for. Standing in a position where you obscure the screen, especially standing before the uh, projector and the screen and then your shadow falls and audience could not see and then they tell you could you please move, could you please move. So, that again will be a distractive one and then you showed some picture and then you were lost in the picture and you completely got digressed. So, getting lost in digressions is something that you should watch out for. Moving about too much, so visual is here, so you keep coming this side, going this side, that is also an unnecessary distraction. So, when you do this, keep an eye on the audience's body language, are they feeling restless, are they so involved, immersed in what you are showing. So, depending on their body language, you can decide whether you want to show it longer, whether you want to continue with that or you should change your strategy. Is it the time to stop and tell them a joke, so that they come back okay. or is it the time to show them additional visuals, because they are more interested in that. So, keep an eye on the audience's body language, which will tell you whether they are really interested in your visuals or they are getting disinterested. Now, towards the end, that is after using learning how to use all these uh, visuals, keep in mind some presentation practicalities, especially if you are a very amateur inexperienced presenter and if you are going and giving a presentation somewhere abroad in a different place within India in a conference, in a seminar, okay, you have been invited and you are going and giving a presentation and you are using a PowerPoint. Try to send that file in advance, okay. email the files in advance. You, if the file is too large, at least convert that, so in the form of PDF and then again you can send it. So, you can use any method, but then try to send it. Then do not just rest and then relax and think that oh I have now sent the file, so I do not have to carry anything with me. That is a risky proposition, because you should ensure first of all whether it has reached properly, but there is a possibility that uh, it did not reach them, some virus was there on the computer, so the email got lost, so email could not be retracted, the file could not open, any issue can happen, so this is just a standby but you should keep a hot copy, copy in the form of transparencies if possible and you should also if possible keep your own uh, uh, PPT in a pen drive. Okay. If possible keep that in a disk, if it is a long one get it written in the DVD or copy it again in the pen drive. In some cases if you want specific fonts and some media when you take it to another computer, it may not be using the same font, because the version may be different and it may be the operating system may be different. So, you need to have some compatibility. So, it is better that you carry it with you and then send something in advance just as a standby. And when you reach the venue, go experience the venue and then check whether it is working on the computer before the audience would come. Okay, get some time, go there uh, 10, 15 minutes before, check it and whichever laptop or computer you are going to use on the LCD projector that you are going to use, check whether it is getting connected and check the entire presentation, whether it is flowing freely, smoothly without any uh, hiccup, okay, without any hindrance. This means, you take a quick rehearsal even before others come in the computer that is meant for your presentation. Now, 
if you ensure this, you will also be very confident when you are going to give the presentation. How will you organize your presentation? So, some quick tips on organizing strategies for your presentation. One way is to use the chronological method that is starting from history. So, 17th century this happened, 18th century this happened, 19th century this happened, 20th century and currently this is what I am anticipating and 21st century this is likely to happen chronological or you can simply say so uh, certain aspects of how something will behave in a week. So, it happens on Monday this way, Tuesday like this, Wednesday like this. So, and you can give chronological in terms of history, in terms of date, the first thing comes first. You can also use problem cause solution method. So, this means you want to say that uh, people are so much affected by the problem of pollution. Now, what causes pollution and where it is causing? So, you can say that air pollution, water pollution. So, there are so many other types of pollution, but you can say I am restricting my talk to these two types of pollution. What are the agents which cause pollution? So, that is cause and what are the solutions that you can give? So, problem, pollution, what is causing it and what could be the solution? You can also use this pro and con. So, for and against, advantages, disadvantages, merits, demerits, good points, bad points. So, this method is also nice, especially if you want to show contrast, compare two things and then make the audience understand which one is better than the other. The other simple method which I said at the beginning of uh, the presentation lecture, the sequential method 1, 2, 3. So, I am going to talk about four important issues. Firstly or first and foremost, secondly, thirdly and finally to conclude or even fourthly and then you conclude. So, the sequential model. So, these are the conventionally used ones that helps the audience to understand that you are able to deliver it in a coherent manner. But remember to give that effective presentation that will get you that standing ovation, you need to practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more effective you will become, the more confident you will deliver the content, the more effective your body language will also become. Now, before I conclude this module, let me give you some final tips, overall tips on presentation skills as such. As you become a professional, as you become an expert speaker, try to use topics from your own experience. Initially, prepare topics which are from uh, so many books and materials which are readily available. For example, internet, is it a bane or boon? Technology, is it a bane or boon? So, modern inventions, talk about computer and so on. So, ready made topics are available. So, you can memorize that and then give small talks, but as you become a professional and then instead of waiting for people to give you topics, you try to use topics from your own experience, you volunteer and you tell them I have worked on this topic, this area which many people are not familiar with and I would like to give a lecture small talk on this topic. And when you do that, you also try to develop narrative skills. How do you develop narrative skills? It is just like telling a story and try to in fact tell stories to your friends, to your colleagues, to your family members and that will enhance your narrative skills. So, you plan what should be said at the beginning, middle and end. If there is a suspense story, you know when to break the suspense, how to build it. So, that is narrative skills. So, try to develop that, the art of telling somebody something, reporting in the form of telling a story. Whenever you get a chance, ensure that you will always give a talk only if you have an objective. Never speak without a purpose. 
Okay. Do not give useless, meaningless talk. That is the easiest way to become unpopular and audience will start hating you, running away from you. Speak only with a purpose. And when you build up an argument in your talk, so when you are arguing in favor against something, use interesting examples. Okay. So, the more interesting it will be, the better audience will be able to remember them. Connect them with personal anecdotes, tell how you can relate it to you, what happened in your personal life, how can you relate to this one. The way you relate, many other people will be able to relate to your personal experience and they will be able to understand that better. Use funny facts. Okay. In fact, what I imply by this is use humor, occasional humor, occasional sense of humor will make the audience break the monotony. In fact, even in interview, okay, if you can use wit, okay, if you can give an intelligent joke and if you can make the people in the interview panel laugh, okay, so you can almost be sure that uh, you are getting the job because that will make them look at and another aspect of you which generally they have ignored and same thing with the presentation also. When you use humor, so they thought that you are a very serious speaker, you are a very uh, uh, serious scientist and then a researcher, you are uh, giving very serious ideas, but suddenly you go off track slightly, give a funny fact, funny anecdote, so that will make people relate to you in a better manner. Okay. Having said this, Last two points in terms of overall communication, you need to communicate clearly. If there is no mic and then you are confronted in a situation, you have to give a talk, project your voice, which means you need to speak a little more loudly as if you are acting before them, as if you are on a stage and then those days if you remember, there were no microphones. So, the actors have to shout. Okay. So, imagine that you have to speak more loudly than normal, but it will feel unusual at first, <coughs> but your audience would not notice, because in fact, raising your voice is something that will make the audience focus to you. Okay. There are speakers who raise their voice, speak so loud, so that they even ensure that nobody in the audience can sleep, it is so loud. They, they cannot sleep in that loud noise, okay. but <clears throat> the point I am making is it should be loud enough so that they are able to hear it clearly. But if you speak softly, so they will notice that why uh, this person is speaking so soft, I am not able to hear only to the people who are sitting in the first row, it is audible, then they become restless and then they get distracted and they do things which you do not want them to do. Communicating clearly on the one hand, but communicating effectively overall <coughs> is the most important objective of delivering a public speech or an oral presentation. Remember, <coughs> there is no point in giving a presentation that the audience cannot understand. So, if it goes above their height or if it is too low or you are making it complicated, as you very well know, there are some people who use very complex uh, vocabulary, so that even a simple idea becomes very difficult for you to understand. But there are others that I want you to follow, who even take a very complex idea, difficult subject, but they use simple thoughts, simple expressions and then they find simple ways of convincing you to understand that and that is the method you should follow, so that the audience can understand you fully and effectively. Okay. So, if you can do this and keep this in mind, you will definitely become that uh, popular speaker. And finally, <coughs> when you give a talk, enjoy yourself great psychologists like Abraham Maslow, 
they say that in our life we have opportunities for peak experiences, heightened experiences. One of the heightened peak experiences that you can get is the speech that you deliver before audience, the larger the number, the greater your peak experience. So, when you experience that peak form of uh, your uh, performance, enjoy yourself. When you enjoy yourself giving the talk, the audience will also enjoy your performance. And then be creative. I have given you a lot of suggestions, but then try to break away even if you think that you can do better than what I have said. Okay. And if somebody tells you this is the way it should be done, but if you think creatively and if you feel that if it can be done this way, it is still better, do that, be creative. And when you slowly develop yourself in terms of uh, oral presentation and public speech, develop your own style, okay, your own style of narrating things, your own style of telling jokes, your own style of presentation, your own style of preparing slides. So, make your style and then what will have is soon you will have your own fans, people will like your own unique style. Initially, you will be bit embarrassed, bit shy thinking that can I really do this, but just do what comes naturally to you. So, that may be your real inner talent and take out that potential and you will have your own fans and you will get that standing ovation that I have been telling you to visualize right from the beginning. Now, the last concluding thought after talking to you so much about presentation skills, I have given you enough inputs, but uh, look at the famous quote from this uh, martial arts superstar uh, Bruce Lee. He says that knowing is not enough. So, now you know everything about public speaking, but that knowing is not enough. We must apply. You must use it in your presentation. Willing is not enough. Okay, you are willing to do this, you wish to do this, that is not enough, we must do. What does it mean? Suppose you do not know how to swim, you go to the library and read tons of books, thousands of books on swimming you have read. But I ask you, did you ever go to the swimming pool? You say no. Did you ever jump into the water in the swimming pool? You say no. Do you understand? You must do it. Reading hundreds of books on swimming will not help you. You have read 20,000 books on how to ride a bicycle, but you are afraid of sitting on the seat and then uh, holding the handlebar. So, how will you learn cycling? The same thing goes with public speaking, speaking any communication related issue, it is an art you need to develop it, you will develop it only by practice and any amount of knowledge that I give you is not going to be enough. As I said at the beginning of uh, the lecture, the purpose of uh, these videos, the purpose of uh, my lectures particularly is not to help you just get a certificate and display to people, just do all these assignments. But beyond this certificate and assignment, have you learned something from this? And learning in that sense, has it done something to you, your thinking, your belief, change in your behavior? Have you taken one step okay, and then have you followed it up by taking more steps? That is what is meant by willing is not enough, we must do. Do it, practice it, become a very trained professional public speaker, do not have any fear for oral presentation, embrace any chance, jump at any chance, use all the tips I have given. Very soon, you will also become a very effective communicator in terms of oral presentation. Wish you all the best. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.